UFC Vegas 66 was the last event for the promotion in 2022. It had some very entertaining fights, which caused the official rankings to change. It looks like after seven years, Tony Ferguson is officially out of the UFC lightweight standings. This is sad since he's always been one of the most exciting fighters in the UFC. So let's learn more about him dropping out of the rankings. We'll also look at him possibly retiring. To start with, Tony Ferguson gets knocked out of the rankings. Ferguson, who is 38 years old and used to be the interim lightweight champion, has dropped out of the rankings for the first time in more than in seven years. He was replaced by Drew Dober, who knocked out Bobby Green and won a bonus at UFC Fight Night 216 on Saturday. Before that submission loss, Tony Ferguson, who now has a 25-8 professional record, had lost back-to-back -back matches to Michael Chandler, Benil Darius, Charles Oliveira, and Justin Gaethje, two other former division gold holders. He also moved up in the UFC lightweight rankings after a submission win over Gleison Tebow at UFC 184, Rousey vs. Zingano. His last win was against Donald Cerrone at UFC UFC 238, Cajedo versus Moreas. The doctor stopped the fight in round two because Cerrone had hurt his eye. His last loss was to Nate Diaz versus Guitin Choke at UFC 279. Keeping in mind his most recent chokes, it makes sense why he'd be pushed out of the rankings, but even then, Tony says he's not done fighting. Coming up, Tony Ferguson once held the most consecutive wins at the lightweight limit. Before losing to Gaethje in 2020, Ferguson, who was born and raised in Oxnard, held the record for most consecutive wins in the lightweight division. Between 2013 and 2019, he won 12 straight fights, including an interim title. During his time with the promotion, Ferguson never fought for undisputed lightweight gold. He's even famous for having five scheduled fights with former undisputed best and arch rival Khabib Nurmagomedov, which sadly fell through. Adding on to this, he also won the interim lightweight title by submitting Kevin Lee at the top of UFC 216 in 2017. This is the same insane dude who won the Ultimate Fighter 13 tournament at the welterweight limit. Not only this, but Tony also became well known online for his funny stunts and unusual ways of training, like kicking metal pipes and hanging from the ceiling with bungee cords. In his 12-year UFC career, he's beaten big names like Kevin Lee and Cowboy Cerrone. What's more, Ferguson's game just kept going down. It's true that in recent years, things have gone downhill for Ferguson. He has lost his last five fights in a row. Before he won the title, he lost by unanimous decisions to top lightweight contenders Charles Oliveira and Benel Darius. In his UFC 274 fight with former 155-pound title challenger Mike Michael Chandler, he was knocked out by a brutal front kick. Ferguson's last fight was at UFC 279 in September. He was trying to start over by moving back up to welterweight, but Nate Diaz beat him in the main event. Keep in mind, this is the same guy who was once thought to be Khabib Nurmagomedov's biggest threat because he had never lost a fight. Yes, the Khabib. And with him dropping out of the rankings, it's safe to say Tony is definitely going through the worst time of his career. Finally, many people think he hasn't been the same since his injuries. Many of Tony's fans who wanted him to challenge Khabib for the belt were disappointed when he couldn't counter Justin Gaethje's amazing performance at UFC 249. Gaethje kept Tony off balance with his hard-hitting style of fighting. Throughout the fight, Tony's opponent wore him down to the point where he couldn't respond with any big hits. In the fifth round, Gaethje hit his opponent with a series of hard blows that made Ferguson stumble and made the referee stop the fight. This was the first time in Tony's career that he lost by knockout, and his winning streak ended, so did his chin. Then at UFC 256, Tony Ferguson went back into the ring to fight famous submission fighter Charles Oliveira. Tony's fans were hoping their favorite fighter would be able to win again and give his career a boost. Again, the odds weren't in his favor since Oliveira controlled most of the fight. Even though Ferguson tried hard, he seemed to be losing the fight the entire time. As the first round ended, Ferguson fought Oliveira's deadly armbar for more than eight seconds until the bell rang. Even though Ferguson narrowly avoided a first round submission loss, the attack clearly hurt his arm. Oliveira kept hurting Ferguson with smart takedowns for the rest of the fight. When the final bell rang after three rounds, it was obvious who had won. Oliveira won by a unanimous decision, and Tony's slump got worse. Many people say Tony has never been able to recover from these injuries. And now let's look into when will Tony Ferguson retire. First up, Tony fires back after being told to retire. El Kukui was recently criticized by Daniel Cormier, who said that he should retire after losing to Nate Diaz in the fourth round of UFC 279 by guillotine choke. But it looks like the Ultimate Fighter 13 winner isn't going to let anyone tell him when he's done. He told ESPN that he would retire when he felt like he was ready to retire. The conversation then heated up a bit when he said Daniel Cormier and all the other commentators keep repeating the same things. It seems like they all want him to retire. Tony thinks this narrative keeps going into the media because these commentators keep pushing into it, and it seems like they want people to think he's a quitter. The entire thing got even more intense when he called Cormier out. He said he's never cheated to get on the scales to keep his championship, as DC did with Towelgate. According to Ferguson, these guys would grab a towel and try to lift some pounds off the scale. He thinks it's an inside job because when this was happening, the UFC was there. 
Ferguson thought a person like Cormier calling other people out was unfair because they actually work hard and that it doesn't take a genius to see what he's been up to. It looks like Ferguson has been in grind mode and is on the run to prove to everyone that he's still a champ. Up next, he says he will continue to grow and is excited about his new team. Ferguson was disappointed with how UFC 279 turned out, but he was optimistic about his future with his new team. He's also admitted that when Justin Gaethje hit him, his team kind of fell apart. It seemed like everyone just went their own way. But he's grateful that he found a really good new team when he started looking for one, and it looks like his group of astronauts is trying to figure out what the problem is. Tony is definitely doing better since he said he's back on schedule these days, and now he's just waiting for his left shin to heal. He said that his loss to Diaz was a case of good luck, and not because he hadn't trained enough. If Diaz hadn't gone for the takedown that cost Tony the submission loss, he would have been the one with the loss after their last second fight was scheduled. But it's cool that Tony's company is growing, and he's growing with it. He says he'll pave the way to be right there with the promoters and try to get things done, and he'll keep doing that, even though some people and commentators doubt him. Moving on to, Tony doesn't see his defeat with Nate Diaz as an end to his road. No doubt, many people were worried about Ferguson after he lost by submission to Nate Diaz at welterweight. After that, it seemed like he was still signing new deals with the promotion, and even though he has lost five times, he still might get more fights with the promotion. Fans, on the other hand, want him to stop because they think if a weaker opponent like Diaz beats him, then it's definitely time for him to step down. In response to this, though, Tony Ferguson has said that he will not quit mixed martial arts. He also went on Instagram to make a post calling these fans out, saying, shut the fuck up. After the fight with Diaz, Tony Ferguson sat down at the UFC 279 post-fight press conference to talk about what fans and experts had said on social media and confirmed that he would keep fighting in the UFC. Okakui also told the press at the press conference that Nate Diaz and his team had asked him to train with them after their fight at UFC 279. Apparently, he was asked to come to their camp, and even though he's got his own, Tony thinks this is a good opportunity to chill out and train. It's cool that his own opponent, who beat him, still has some hope left in his abilities and is giving him a chance to catch up. Finally, what's next for Tony Ferguson if he doesn't retire? Tony Ferguson hasn't won a single fight in his last five matches, so it goes without saying he's having a rough time in the UFC. The former interim lightweight champion is running out of options because very few top contenders in both the lightweight and welterweight divisions would be willing to fight him. But Tony's persistence to keep going just might give him a few chances to redeem himself. It looks like if El Kukui wants to go back to the lightweight division, he should fight Dan Hooker. This would be a great fight to watch, I'm not gonna lie, and it makes sense since they're ranked 11th and 14th in the division. From the press conference, it looked like Tony Ferguson enjoyed fighting at welterweight. Stephen Thompson would be a great opponent too because he likes to stand and strike. In the same way, Wonderboy has lost a few times in a row and this fight would be exciting to watch for fans all over the world. That's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts on Tony Ferguson dropping out of the rankings? Do you think it's time for him to finally retire? Let us know in the comments below. Also, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and we'll see you in the next one.